Welcome back. So that was our first big story for you today. We'll soon be bringing you that other one, and I'm excited about it when it comes to the FDA and whether they have the capacity to test for certain things and whether they've been testing in other areas. But uh, before we get into that, so you heard me interacting earlier with uh, the Director General of the NDPC. It paints quite a picture, right, when it comes to our development in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know... Um for a country that has a commission like that, you wonder why up till now we're still having a conversation about governance in continuum. You know, like, so one government comes and then they have a different agenda for education and then the next comes and then scraps it. And then so it's almost like two, um, one step forward, two steps backwards, you know. And, 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 and it appears to be something that's really affecting us. In fact, some have even suggested that we increase the term we give to each government so that... You know, a government they can have, have more time to do more. Yeah, to do more and to execute a certain policy or plan. Beyond but is that the something ADS? you would subscribe to? I mean, France, for example, has a five-year tenure. Mm -hmm. Macron, Emmanuel Macron, is in his second five-year term, mm -hmm. which is ten years. Mm -hmm. But and we've seen what has happened in the Ivory Coast with um, Alassane Ouattara, who even extended his term. Would that be the way to go? For me, I don't know what your take is, but for me. If we were getting the right things from our leaders, because sometimes then you are constrained, you are tied to a leader who may be performing woefully, and we've seen many of them on the African continent, and there's nothing you, you can do about it because you have to wait for Boy, his or her boy, term yeah. to, to run out. I, I don't know where you stand on this, on this discussion. So, I mean, it's either this or that, but you have to pay a price either way. So yeah. are, you willing to give, are you willing to give the person more time to execute that agenda? Or you would rather have government change every now and then? And then, unfortunately, there, there doesn't appear to be a national agenda. And then you're going to back and forth. You know, mm. with this three-year, four-year thing, even with high school education, yeah. you know, it's very problematic. But I would have wished that our document... You know, the 40-year the, the, the plan that we have, we would have stuck to it so that when every government comes, we say, this is what we as a people of Ghana decided. Mm. Come and execute it. Um, Benjamin took us to this point, then it's, it's now your turn to take us to the next. Mm. But if we keep leaving it to each government to decide what to do with each sector, if we aren't careful, we may not see real progress, unfortunately. Uh, but it appears that um, the, the issue a lot of people have with the, with the commission um, that it's, it's, it should be seen to be biting harder and insisting that, you know what, we have a development planning commission, we have an agenda, and we must, you know, um, make, make that agenda successful. Well, I also, you know, in interacting with him, uh, there was a bit about where we hope to go, mm. let's say by 2050 mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I look at some of the projections. Interesting. I mean, even GDP per capita and what we should see. But sometimes you look at where we are now in, what, 2022 mm -hmm. at 64 years. Mm -hmm. We have 30, what, six years left to yeah. get to 100 years. We've basically chalked two thirds of that time. What do we have to show? So these are all concerns. Sometimes when you look at, we started so well. I always go back to the colonial period mm -hmm. and then the period with the Nkoma. early days, yeah. We started so well. I mean, I can just imagine if we had continued on that tangent or even yeah. did better, yeah. uh, done better, yeah. where it, we could have been. We waited till what, the, even the, the what, 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. when the likes of Lee Kuan Yew's um, Singapore, Really took off, yes, seventies, eighties. But in three decades, they basically moved from third world to first world, and our compatriots back then, the Malaysians and the other, what we call the Asian tigers mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. look at them and look yeah. at us. Yeah, it all comes down to leadership for me, really, Benjamin. We have to be very frank about that. Um, so I remember my auntie was telling me a story of how Ghana used to be when she was young and the school bus would come at a certain time. And she wasn't in a private school, mind you. And the school bus would come at a certain time. And if you missed it, I mean, it, it was such it a was well like structured yeah. country. You know, there was, we, we, we even tried to reintroduce it, the town council, right. you know, where they come and they ensure that you've got things. 
what do we have now? It's, I mean, some will think I'm exaggerating, but it appears to be total chaos. I mean, people build anyhow. There's no structure. There's no plan. Even when there's a plan, people have their way around it. So you look at the city and we are scattered. No refuse. Even for those who have, you know, have subscribed to companies that will come and pick their rubbish. Right. It's not done. Like, it's not working. You, you know, it's like, yeah, and it's very frustrating, you know. And so you're sitting back and you're hearing all these stories of the Ghana before. What it used to be, you know, and, 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 and then and you we're wonder. We're supposed to be getting better with time. But it we appears aren't. the past we aren't. Is, is, is better. And, and even that brings to mind, you know, the whole thing about the school feeding program. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. look, we're feeding everyone on 97 pesos, you less than what? one Ghana. You know seat. what? You know what? I mean, I mean our, our prisoners, for example, we've been yeah, complaining yeah, when we yeah. had Operation Ifiasi and the rest yeah. because they were, they were what? Was it one CD 80 yeah, pesos yeah, or something yeah, of the sort yeah. per day? Per day. You're feeding these students on 97 pesos. And Ask yourself what you can do with one CD. And these are children who are at a stage where they need a lot of nutritious meals. Look, you cannot give a child not even one CD as a parent in today's Ghana and expect, yes, I know, I know the whole thing of when you cook in bulk is cheaper, yes, but 97 pesos is way too small. And no wonder those who are cooking are saying, yes, you know they what, started their we, we can't today. do this, we can't do this anymore. Let's but but you know why I brought that in? Again, those who benefited from ed education and Ankroma, you know, interestingly, there were those, we have our uncles and aunts and all of them, those who benefited from schooling in Romania, Germany, even Russia, among others. And, and they tell you about that time. I remember, uh, because I'm, a, I'm a pro, an old vandal, they would tell you back then how in your hall you would have chicken. In yeah, fact, yeah. they were sp yeah. spoiled yeah. in a way, yeah. so they could decide today I don't... You have a whole drumstick to yourself yeah. and all yeah, of that. Yeah, the yeah, day, yeah. look at accommodation yeah. in our universities. Sad. Look at look at the cost of food. Sad. It's sad. And I don't know why it appears on every side. Look at power, for example. So we were relying on hydro. The population kept growing. And it was as if we just folded our arms and we were waiting for some miracle to happen yeah. before we realized we've been hit with all this demand, you know, underserved areas. And then it appears that we are panicking all over the place. It's the same with education. Mm. As the numbers grow, you can project right. based on research that, look, every year, this, uh, this is the number of students we get. So let's plan for them. You know, this is the, why haven't we put up you know, university hostels to accommodate these students. You have four, well, some, are, some have people, been put up, some, some are have being been put, put up, but, but you ask does yourself, it, does it the cost, match, exactly. And, cost and, and, and is it proportional to the numbers? And so you have all these private hostels who are ripping parents off. Look, yeah. it will shock yeah. you that a child in university today is paying more than a worker who is paying a year's rent. If you consider the amount they pay each term. Come to think of it. Yes, it is that bad. Is that but you know, some, some are also building. I think, I think I, 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 just in order not to get it they wrong, are. some universities are also saying that if you want us to construct hostels for you, you must, you must be willing as parents to pay more. Yes, I appreciate that. And even in Legon, quite recently, they've yeah. up new halls. Yeah. But I'm just saying that the numbers, when you look at the numbers that are coming in against the development, you realize that there's a big disparity. That's why... So, that, that, that's why they, they opened the links for these hostels and whatever, and in, a, in less know, than a minute, it is gone because hello, the I, population I, and... I don't know if she's watching. Hello, Emma Fanansi. It's been a while. But <laughs> I remember... Yes, Dradosi. <laughs> I remember there was a day during the newsroom meeting we were all talking about this issue of accommodation for university students, and she told me... I mean, I, I was shocked. I went to GIJ, and we didn't have an... Um, right. On location residence, so right. I didn't have any. No, now you do. There yeah, are yeah, some yeah, 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 the yeah, other yeah, campus yeah. But the new, camp, the old campus, sorry, didn't have that. So I never experienced that. And she was like, "Look, people stay awake, just waiting for a portal to open. Why should we? Why should it be so?" Good questions uh, when it comes to our national life. But Bernice, would you like to bring in Samuel for Joe Brace? Yes, and uh, obviously you know the show is just about you. And we are concerned about what matters to you. So today, uh, Samuel is in town, as we've been discussing. He's finding out from you what the ideal Ghana is. What's the ideal Ghana you want to see? Hello, Kujo. Tell us what people have been sharing with you. What is your ideal Ghana that you want to see? 
Well, let me start off with uh, this man. But remember that you can join us with your thought and comment on our social media handles and we will share it with the rest of the world. Good morning, sir. Good morning, boss. I hope you're well. Yeah, by his grace. So, when you think about Ghana, what is your ideal Ghana you want to see? Yeah, I want to see Ghana in a way that everybody will feel comfortable and uh, uh, things that are supposed not to be uh, should always be put aside and then everybody will feel comfortable. For instance, like just recently, uh, rain. Uh, everywhere, Kaneshi got flooded. Construction, uh, construction work are no more the way we want to see the construction. Even the take a huge amount of money. We're supposed to see everything in a good shape, but it's not like that. Where I'm standing now, circle, they just constructed the place, but the gutters are small, small, small. So each time, every time that there is a, a rain, the whole place will get flooded. So we will, we will be in the city for our various workplaces and before the rain will start, everybody will be feeling uncomfortable. Even to join the car will be a problem. Mm. Tariff, everything is increasing. So me, I would like to see a Ghana that metro masses, metro, metro mass buses will be available, train, railway state, uh, sector will be available so that we will come from our various homes and then to workplaces and then it will be easier for everybody to move on and then everything will be fine. That's what I want to see Ghana. Thank you very much. That's, that's a beautiful Ghana that he's painted out there. So that's the kind of uh, Ghana he wants to see. Let me try and get more people to, to find out uh, they are, they are the Ghana that they want to see. Uh, what is your ideal Ghana that you want to see? Join us on our social media platforms. Let's have your thought. Let me try and get other people's thought here about uh, their ideal Ghana, uh, the ideal Ghana they want to see. Well, there's a student coming. Let me try and, and find out from him uh, the sort of ideal Ghana he wants. Uh, Chief. So uh, we'll have to hold on with that, but it's important to us, so we'll come back to it. And uh, now we've been joined by the FDA's Joseph Yao, Bernie Bernie. He's director for uh, the Legal Affairs. And you, you must have heard by now what's happening at the Morocco restaurant in East Ligon. We just want a quick update on that. And then uh, my colleague Benjamin will come in with the uh, Bright Simons bit on what's, what's happening with regards to the facilities we have and what we can test. Thank you so much for your time this morning, sir. So first off, let me find out from you, uh, what's the latest update with the Malako restaurant case? Thanks so much for the opportunity. Um, I'm sure by now we are aware we indicated that two or the other facilities were um, asked to stop production. That's mm. Lela um, and the uh, Abelenpe branches. As we also indicated earlier, our samples are still in the lab. We are waiting for results. We okay. engage management and staff of the facility. We are trying to understand some few things as to what happened, some of the processes. We are reviewing some of the processes that took place there. Okay. Around that, the time that the incident occurred. And we are putting all this together. As we also indicated, we've had interaction with some of the patients, both at the hospital. Some have come to our facility. Some have also called us on phone, and we are taking them through the necessary process uh, required by this uh, protocol for investigating a suspected food poisoning. So we are okay. in the process of doing that. Uh, and Mr. Yeah. Bernie, sorry, is it that uh, for the other branches, the Agbalimpia and the other one you mentioned, did you also get reports, or is it the case that the, the, they share the same ingredients, or why, why were they also shut? What happened was that... Uh, uh, no, they, we did not have any reports from there that anybody has also had any. But there are interactions between or among these three facilities. Okay. Uh, so there was a uh, need to shut those two facilities down as well. Okay. So, um, Mr. Benny, I'll be moving to uh, my colleague Benjamin, who will be speaking to you about other issues. But just this one. People are concerned that 
the day um, the FDA went to sample the food or pick samples from the restaurant, it's a bit far off from the day the incident was reported. Uh, can you give us, give us any assurances that you will be even able to find anything per your investigations? For all food poisoning cases, it happens. You may go there and you may not even find the food at all because the food would have been consumed. There will be no samples to even take. So this is no strange incident as far as food uh, poisoning investigations are concerned. Okay. But of course, we found uh, ingredients that have been used previously and that are still being used. Okay. And there are other things that we are looking at. And so okay. it will all guide us into arriving at the decision. For okay. food poisoning, case, you will go there and you will not find even anything at all. Mm, but the happens. people the people who consume the food, nobody left any samples, kept any that they, they shared with the FDA? No. Okay. Okay. Benjamin? Uh, speaking of uh, the food samples, Benjamin here, Mr. Benny Benny. Uh, just on a lighter note, I, we noticed uh, there were quite a number of ice chests uh, big ones that were. Was that what you used to collect the samples from Mawako? <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 I don't know. How to, uh, yes, uh, they, they are part of what we use to collect the samples. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you. You find it as I, funny I, as I, I, I did. I, I, I'm <laughs> sure, Mr. Benny Benny, I'm sure you see the social media posts about that. That's why you are laughing. There are those who yeah. say, why do you need such a big container to just pick food samples? But and, and that's it wasn't even the, one. Was that's like, on the lighter side, though. Yeah, you, uh, you don't know what to expect, so you go prepared. That's nice. That's a nice one. <laughs> All right, let, let's, let's get to some more uh, serious stuff. So... I just want to find out, as an FDA, so you did mention that you were ruling out the fact that uh, these noodles um, were present we are moving in to our country. Else. We are moving I, I, on. Are you moving to something else? Yes, yes. The, your wow. press statement on the Indomie. Um, um, the, 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 so the, the brand, of, the the brand of noodles. But can you make this? Snappy for me. I'm okay, I'm sure. sure. I, uh, very, very, very snappy. I just want to find out from you. So, as an FDA, do you perform pesticide tests on processed cereals? Do Do you have that capacity? Let, let, let me just assure that we read the tweet from Bri uh, Mr. Bryce Simmons. Mm -hmm. We are responding to it. So we should expect a statement. Yes. Okay. The, the statement will come out very soon. I have, it, I have it in my hands, but I cannot read it now. Okay. So, so you have I a statement. Uh, is that to say maybe, yes, today, maybe today we'll hear from the FDA on, on the... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a response. I have, I have it with me, but I cannot read it to you now. And so it is fine and I will read it. We are, can you at least share with us? I mean, it's a no, matter of concern. Not, I, I know, I, I don't want you to get into anything <laughs> in the statement, but I just want to find out for our own safety, security, all of us, mm -hmm. An aflatoxin lab, I mean, pesticides and all of that, is the FDA able to test for these? That is the essence of the uh, uh, release that has come, so I cannot, and I, uh, trust me, I will not go right. into that until okay. we release. So hopefully when the release is out, we'll, it will, we'll get it those will be details. It will be out with this time from now. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking forward to it. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Mr. Bernie. He is director of uh, for legal and corporate affairs at the FDA and he's been giving us a quick update on the Mawako incident right and uh, on the lighter note uh, he spoke about <laughs> the, the size the, the, of, the ice <laughs> of that ice chest. I'm happy I got him <laughs> laughing there yeah 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 because yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people were wondering uh, but Benjamin I, I'm happy the the FDA has seen the tweet and they're going to respond to it we've yeah. got our fingers crossed we don't know what's in that statement it, it's a major concern for me Exactly. Because I want to know, I mean, they are the gatekeepers. Mm. I want to know, when I'm consuming these products, apart from running my own personal security checks, checking, is it, has it expired, has it not expired, and all of that. Beyond that, mm. I can't go into any further testing. So the FDA must protect me. And so if there are any concerns there, it would be... So it would be interesting, now that he's mentioning maybe today we'll get that release, I would like to take a microscopic look at it and find out what they would have to say on the back of that. Definitely. But let's go back to that conversation. What is the ideal Ghana you want to see? And my colleague, Kujo Brace, is still out getting your thoughts.
you are a young man, when you think about Ghana, what sort of Ghana do you want to see for yourself and, and, your, and your generation? Oh, now everything is hard, but I want to see Ghana in the next five years to come like great country and yeah, to the worldwide to hear of Ghana that we are doing the most. Yeah. If you say you want to see Ghana a great country, what and what would you see to make you feel that Ghana is great? What and what? Yeah, I mean, uh, what do you want to see change? You've seen roads, railway, clinics, hospitals. Uh, I mean, for you, what would make you say that Ghana is great? General cleaning can make Ghana great because now you can see fuels around. Then um, I don't know how to say it, but now things are not going well. But um, if the government is hearing what I'm saying, it can help we to build roads, um, construct um, trainways, and do all sort of um, human needs and wants. Yeah. Okay. So that's a citizen. Uh, uh, having uh, his say, thank you, uh, and, and, and that, that's on the citizen microphone. So he's had a microphone, he said what he wants to see Ghana become. Let me try and get the thought of uh, this young man as well to find out what his ideal Ghana will be. This is still live on the AM show on Joy News. Chief, good morning. Thanks very much for your time. How are you doing? I'm good. If, if you look at Ghana the way it is, uh, what sort of Ghana do you want to see uh, in the in the near future oh okay so um, in the near future I want to see Ghana to be a country that doesn't look out for politics but look out to solve our own issue with everybody's interest at, at hand mm. and now everybody is thinking of him or herself so looking at a better way they don't look at it they think of what will help them mm. but if you had to drop that side and try to work together to make the country a good place, I think that's what I look out for mm. in the near mm. future. Mm. So for you, what would make you come to the conclusion that this is the ideal Ghana I want to see? So um, where we look at everything, um, the systems in place doesn't favor one or the other. Although we have laws, but we don't see the law work because who to send you there becomes a different problem or who to stand in for you even finding the right person becomes a problem but i guess to where i would say it's the ideal is when all this is in place and we see it so getting hold of it is not a difficult something for us that's what i'll say that that's the ideal or we are there mm. yes the way things are going do you foresee it happening for you hmm. not now how many years from now? I can't tell. Maybe the next generation. <laughs> because we're now we've been trained to move that way. So it will take a lot of people. Although we have some particular people trying to work that, it will take a lot of people for us to get there. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for, uh, for your uh, thought here. This is still the citizen microphone on uh, the AM show on Joy News simple question we ask you today what is your ideal Ghana uh, how do you want to see Ghana in the next 10 years in the next 20 in the next 30 in your time and beyond let's still get more thought from citizens here uh, there's this man here I would want to have his thought good morning sir good morning I hope you're well I'm doing great um, I mean this is our country Ghana sure. uh, what is your ideal Ghana your ideal Ghana might be different from mine so what do you want to see to f make you conclude that this is the ideal Ghana I want to see? Um, well, Ghana, Ghana, Ghana in itself, um, we don't want to see anything measured, but we just want to see um, constant progress as in uh, basic amenities provided for the people and um, constant job for the youth to prevent them from entering into petty crimes and other things. That's the ideal Ghana everybody wants to see, not even me per se, but I think if I speak, I speak for the youth also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for you, what would change for you to say that this is my ideal Ghana? People getting jobs, but what are the things that you can measure? Uh, well, I think um, as of now, what we see uh, is all boiled down to leadership, and I, I think like if if we should have um, um, leaders that are nationalist per se, yeah, I think we will have that thing. We will have that progress in 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 a short time. 
because like it's, we are having leadership crisis because if you see now everything going up and like it's as if there's nobody in charge of the country and that is worrying so i think like if we have a nationalist leader i think we are going to have that progress in no time Thank you, gentlemen. So he's had his say. Um, let's speak to this uh, student here. Chief, how are you? I'm good. You are a student. I'm, I'm well. Um, you are now coming up. Uh, when you sit in your classrooms and you talk amongst yourselves, what kind of Ghana do you want to see? I want to see a type of Ghana that will be better in the near future and also help the education. What will make you say Ghana is better? If you say Ghana is better, I mean, it's too open. What and what will make you conclude that Ghana is better now? I didn't say it's better now, for now. No, no, I'm not saying better now. I'm saying that what will change for you to then conclude at that time, when you see those things, for you to conclude that, well, Ghana is better? In the way we behave and the way we live among ourselves, that will show the improvement of how Ghana has become. How do we live? How do we behave? Sometimes... The way the fair and the other staff, you know, some cannot afford it, so it makes it difficult for them to come to school. And that is also another problem. Oh, some of your people cannot come to school because of the increment in fares? Yes. Wow. So if they work and they come to school late, sometimes the door has been locked, so they need to go back and return the next day. So these are things you want changed for you to say that this is your ideal Ghana? Yes, that's what I want. And more and more. What are there more? <laughs> For now, they, I can't see, okay. uh, but later, some of them will come and okay. right. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that is another citizen sharing his thought about his ideal Ghana. Let me try and uh, get some more. Uh, let, let's, I, I've not gotten a lady. Let me, let me speak to this lady here. How are you doing? I'm very fine. Good. So what, when you think about Ghana, what is your ideal Ghana you want to see for yourself and your generation and, and even beyond? Yeah, I think Ghana is actually one of the best Afghan countries in the world and we have the capabilities but some of the leaders are not, you know, thinking, you know, visionary like how our former leaders used to. But I think if we strive hard, we can make it, yes. Mm. Yes. What will change or what will you see for you to conclude that this is my ideal Ghana? Yeah, if we continue to like train the children yeah, on how to you know, build up the country, I think Ghana can become great, yes. So for you, what, what must change, what must happen? For you to see that, well, today Ghana is great. Yes, Ghana is very great. Yeah, so I think if the leaders are, you know, focused on the problems that are facing us, especially with the economic hardships, it's like nothing is being done about it. So if they try to, you know, decrease the prices and the inflation and all those things, I think the country will be good to go. Yes. Thank you. So reduction in inflation, he thinks, she thinks that that will be her ideal Ghana. Uh, there's another Ghanaian here, a young man who's uh, striving to work to make ends meet for him. Chief, how are you? I'm fine, sir. I'm sure you do have a dream for Ghana, don't you? Yes, I have. What is your dream? Uh, my dream is to make Ghana one of the best and uh, best place like every citizen can live and live better. What do you think must change for you to conclude that, well, this is the sort of Ghana I dream of? Yeah, there are a lot of things must change. Share them with us. Uh, the way we behave as Ghanaians and our leaders also accepting responsibilities are some of the things we have to do to make our country a better place to live. Interesting. So he thinks that, and, and you share a thought with other people, other people also think behavior, the way we behave and our leaders. Why is that a big deal? Yeah, so it's two ways. So the citizenry will accept responsibilities and change of behavior. And the leadership will also have to also accept responsibilities by changing the way they do things because at times some of the decisions they take does not help us at all. So that is what I can also contribute. And what about the citizens? You mentioned them. 
Yeah, our behavior, we seems to do anything we want. The level of uh, le uh, lawlessness and the level of uh, indiscipline is too much. We take granted everything for granted. We do things the way we want to do them without thinking of the consequences that will come. All right, thank you for sharing that with us. So that says his. Let me try and get more thought here. Uh, Chivo, just a minute, sir. Uh, what, what is your ideal Ghana you want to see? My ideal Ghana? Yes. Uh, I want to see a Ghana that is having a bright future and the youth getting jobs and there will be uh, easy access to money and the economy will be growing, yeah. Time to time, yeah. That's my easy idea. access to money, yeah. Yeah, yes, please. It's yeah. difficult to get access the to money. money. Yeah, you want the money, you know, the youth, you need money to establish businesses so okay. when the money is available we can do some entrepreneurship jobs or business but, but why do you think it's not accessible uh, accessible now uh, looking at the rates you know the the bank charges so like people don't have it uh, in mind to go for loans to uh, have credit to those kind of um, um I, I don't know opportunities that's available out there yeah mm. yeah so i think easy access to money will help yeah mm. for my ideal guy and that's what i believe in okay. yeah all right Thank you very much. So that's, that's his ideal Ghana. We're still on the street of Accra getting your thought. This is on the citizen microphone here on the AM show on Joy News. Uh, we, we, we let, let's get uh, some two more and then we can call it a day. But remember, you can join us with your thought as well on our social media handles and we will share that with the rest of the world. What is your ideal Ghana? What do you want to see of Ghana for you to conclude that this is the dream Ghana I have been having? Chief, um, good morning, sir. H how are you doing? I'm fine. Good. Um, you are a young man like myself. What, what, what do I do, Ghana? How do you want to see Ghana become in the future? Oh, for me, I want Ghana to become great in the near future. I'm just seeing what's going on, the, way I, the rate of increase of things, inflation and everything. I'm just praying that by God's grace, everything will be well and everything will go smooth for Ghana. Mm. Yes. So you think that when things, the price of goods and services come down, that is your ideal Ghana? Yeah. Not my ideal Ghana, mm. but when everything is going smoothly and the life of everyone in this country is very good and everyone is living comfortable, that's my ideal Ghana for me. All right. okay. yes. Thank you. Okay. Let me try and, and uh, okay, uh, there's this gentleman here. Chief, how are you? I'm good. Tell me. What is the dream Ghana you've been dreaming about? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, I've been dreaming to see Ghana better. Um, the current stage of Ghana is very bad, very bad to say. Um, Ghanaians, we should all repent, especially our politicians. They are gambling with us. They take us for granted. And we, you and I have given them the opportunity to do that. Because what is happening in the country, an MPP man is always supporting his government. An NDC man is always condemning what call it, the government in power, which is very bad. We all need to repent. The politicians have seen that we have no any other way. We will either defend them or we will criticize them. So they do things anyhow. They don't care. They don't care of the state of Ghana. They will just come out and lie, 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 lie. We really need leaders. In fact, Ghana, especially Africa, we are lacking leaders. That's why we have every resources in Africa, especially Ghana, but yet we are poor. Why? Because our leaders will come and talk plenty and wouldn't do anything. They will talk a lot, promise a lot, and wouldn't do anything. In fact, we are, me, me per se, in fact, I am very sad. And Ghanaians, if we don't take our future into consideration, tomorrow our children, Imagine the current stage of Ghana, what will happen in the next 30 years to come. Uh, by that time, you and I will be retired, uh, and our children will take it. So what we are showing now, it is going to be brutal in future. So I just pray that the leaders will think and lead the country well. It doesn't matter the, the resources, what matters is good leadership. Mm. We've, we've all seen what Dubai was and how Dubai is now, mm. it's because of a leader, mm. not the resources say thank you so much so and then you you spoke about that citizens as well you yes. said we also have a duty yes we also have a duty in fact we are very lazy Ghanaians we pretend that we are religious okay every day church church praying 24 hours and wouldn't work you see that we are not responsible throwing rubbish around 
throwing everything around. We are not responsible as citizens. We are, we are too, uh, let me use the word, we are too irresponsible. Mm. And we need to change. Mm. If we really want Ghana to work, it starts from you and I. We need to be responsible. And now ask the government or the leaders to, to be responsible. Mm. So for you, what would the leaders change for you to conclude that they are now responsible and this would help Ghana? Oh yeah, they should fight corruption. The corruption is key. Me, I always wish that a government should come and tell me how he's going to fight corruption, not how he's going to work. The monies that have been going throughout uh, what you call it, the back doors or the wrong hands, that money alone can save Ghana. Mm. Every day, huge sum of monies are going to wrong hands. That's why Ghana will not go anywhere. They will give out a contract to this person. Go and investigate and see. The money will pass through so many stages. They will share the money among themselves and small amount of the money will be used to do the contract and the contract will be shady work. Mm. Mm. So, in fact, the leaders should fight corruption. Mm. As soon as they start, as soon as I'm seeing that Nana has started persecuting his own appointees, I know that Ghana will work. Mm. Okay. So that is his ideal Ghana. A Ghana where leadership is effective, Ghana where citizens are responsible for the things that happen around them. That is the Ghana he wants to see. What is the Ghana you want to see? We want to have your say, we want to have your thoughts on our platforms so we can share that with the rest of our viewers. This has been the Citizen Microphone coming to you live from the streets of Accra. I am Samuel Kojo Brace. Over to you those in the studio. Alrighty, so that was Samuel Kojo Brace uh, hitting the streets of Accra and bringing us uh, those thoughts there, especially that last person. Quite a lot he had to uh, mm, share. Mm. And, and so he talks a bit of our responsibility as citizens as well. And it, it should yeah. not be lost on us that even though we call our politicians to order, there are, you know, Things that we it behoves have to, us to yes, do certain things. Yes, there we are can things call them we, out. Exactly. Right. So if every Ghanaian put their refuse at a designated point and the government wasn't coming for it, then we could hit government very hard. But here's the case. There are those who take it to the designated point and then we don't have those who are supposed to collect it come for it on time. And there are those who also throw it in unapproved, at unapproved places. And, so and it's, which it's which a results in thing. some of what we saw on Saturday, the flooding. Serious flooding. Mm -hmm. Serious flooding. And then there's also the bit where he talks about um, where he would he would feel okay if this president, for example, begins to prosecute people who have been found culpable of one thing or the other within his government. He thinks that people are too polarized. It's, it's either blue or red, and and our minds we don't digest the issues just solely on the facts. We always want to see through a certain lens, and he thinks that. That, that won't help us. And then he, he asked a question, which got me thinking. He said, considering the current state of affairs now, what will Ghana look like in 30 years? That's a good question. Something else he says in, in line with all that we've been discussing. He says we should repent. Mm. And, and that is. But before you go, I know we put our question of the day there. Before you go, there's another interesting development. In fact, this is a breaking a uh, story that we're bringing you. It has to do with football. Yeah, we're, we're breaking it and we'll get back into the bit. But it has to do with Ashanti Gold, the football club. And guess what? They've been demoted to the second division. This is reminiscent of what happened to Ju Juventus years back. They've been demoted to the second division on the back of match fixing. Match fixing. Yeah. And that is the penalty. So the FA has given this directive mm. and now... We're going to see how, you know, the cookie crumbles when it comes to Ashanti Gold. But that is quite a big blow, I mean, from... There are a couple of things that still, as the word intrigue, maybe, about our football here. Match fixing is one of them. The second one has to do with the issue of... Referees? Juju. Oh, Juju. Juju right, in right, football. Right, right. And, I, and, I, and I ask myself... At this stage, where football has developed to, 
And someone asked oh, the yeah, question. Yeah, but people still believe in it. Has any African... And, and work with it. No, okay, no, wait, wait, it's wait, a serious wait, matter. Wait, wait. Well, I, am, I, I appreciate that. And yeah. look, my mom has told me stories before. My mom was a national athlete. Don't speak to athlete. the footballers. They will tell you that they are always, you know, there scared are, of this person are, doing that are, against them. There are, there depending are, on which position are you're situations. playing. My only problem is how we focus so much on that. I'm, like I'm yeah, saying, I agree with you. My mom was a national athlete. And she shared her personal experience with me of how mm. she got onto the court... She played volleyball for Ghana. She got onto the court and her leg swells up. She comes to sit down and she's fine. She goes again and she can't even, you know, hit a ball. Inexplicably. So, yeah, so we know these things happen. But my point is why we are so fixated about it. When other yeah. people are developing stadia, state-of-the-art facilities to train people, and they are winning trophies. So where has our juju taking us? 